Everyone, today on the podcast, our guest is Jeremy. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Jeremy. Thank today. you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Some claps, some claps. Thank you for uh, the audience here. <laughs> so, we met doing stand up, but I know you do, you're an airline attendant. Yeah, flight attendant. Flight yeah. attendant. Yeah. <laughs> so, you probably get a it's lot of day. Hey, listen, people still call me a stewardess, and that's like, I'm not, I'm not, not a stewardess now. No, that's hotels, huh? I mean, I, they used to call flight attendants stewardess, but that's back in the 40s when only hot chicks were flight attendants. Okay. And it was like super sexy. You know when pilots were celebrities? Yeah, like they're, they're, they're like American heroes, basically. Were they? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they were praised. I mean, they're still kind of praised today. Like, have you, have you ever been on a flight before if you've flown? Yeah. Have you ever been on a flight where people clap after? That's weird. Like, like you land. Yeah, you okay. Like, yeah, I do. Okay. I, I I shake my head every single time. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> they're just happy that made their life. They're happy they're alive, but it's like I if I was afraid of dying I wouldn't be doing this job. Okay. And then yeah. also the pilots can't hear you when they do that, so you're doing it for no one. You're you're really doing it because I'm like I, I hate it. I hate it so much. But yeah, I pilots are if it's they still think they're heroes, but they're not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they don't do anything. They just press buttons and then fuck, um, fuck people behind their wives' backs. Okay. Damn, a lot of that going on. I thought, it was a jo- I thought it was a joke. It's real. Damn. I, I was uh, between flights talking to a pilot. Uh-huh. And he's like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm kind of like um, breaking up with like both my girlfriends because they kind of found out about each other. And I'm like, oh, shit. Both girlfriends? Oh, my God. What the fuck? Yeah, it's... It's fucking crazy. And he was married, probably, on top of that. Was. Was. Ha- ha- has kids and stuff. Yeah. Oh, really? Damn. Yeah, you get to learn about yeah. people. I, I feel bad because I never, I always forget their names, and so I just try and, like, drive the conversation in a way where I don't have to remember their names. Oh, yeah. But they always want to tell me their life story. I'm just like, dude, <laughs> I'm going to forget you in three days. Let's just, like, cut the bullshit. Just move on? Yeah. So how do you like being in there? It's Not an airline attendant, but a, yeah, a stewardess. Oh, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> as, so as a stewardess, um, it was good in the beginning. Uh-huh. Um, super, the easiest job I've ever had. Really? But, yeah, like I used, to, I've had a variety of shitty jobs. Mm-hmm. But this one was like super chill, very low um, physical work. But the hours are just fucking insane sometimes. But then COVID happened and then it just turn a bunch of adults into fucking children. Oh, really? Yeah. It's oh, with the mask things? Mask things, like all the rules. Like, in the beginning um, of COVID, they, they only had, they only allowed a certain amount of people on the plane because they had to distance each other. So, oh, okay. So for a long time, it was like half, or like 40% capacity, and it kept going up and up, so they had to block off seats. And then eventually we got back to like normal, and people had to start sitting next to each other again, and then like, what? <laughs> what? I have to s- I, I can't. I can't sit and like. I, what do you want to do? Like uh, move, the, make the plane bigger. Give you my seat. Like you need to grow the fuck up. But yeah, it's just been so much damn. extra shit that I've had. I, I didn't sign up. Like I, I'm supposed to make people follow like the set rules that I was given when I started, like mm-hmm. the federal regulations and stuff. But then I have to like babysit people because of the masks. It's like I didn't sign up to babysit adults and. Mm-hmm. Like in the beginning, it's less so now, but there was a lot of older people that had like protest masks on their, like, um, there's this old lady that had a mask that said, this is bullshit on the mask. And I was like, the fact you're alive is bullshit. Like you just <laughs> pass away. So, so yeah, I don't know. It's been, it was good. It's still good and easy. Like I still get to, I get to travel now, but mm-hmm. it's a, uh, yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. What are the hours like? Dude, it's all over. When you start, um, because of like, um, you start it on reserve, which means you're on call. So you have the choice of either doing a 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. like t- um, time frame where you're on call, you can be called and go to work, or 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And because I like sleeping and I always did the later one. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, so if someone, like a flight attendant calls and says they can't work because they're sick or an emergency, they would call me and have me fill in for that person. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, so I do that. I did that for like the first year, because of it, you just have to until you have enough seniority. Right. And then, um, and that that 
range it. So you, they do like 19 days of that a month. And then you get to become a line holder, which you have like a set schedule. And that's where I'm at right now. And that, and that gives me the option to like pick up and drop stuff, like drop trips and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of relaxed now because I'm, I'm off. I've been off the last week because of, because I can. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. No Just, calls. No calls. Up. They can't. They can't call me. I have a. I work Thursday for the first time like a week and a half. Oh really? Okay. You're yeah. just chilling, living. Yeah, man. I I need my breaks. Can I get two mics? Yeah, I went yesterday. Gonna get it today, or tr try to go today and tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And then, how long do they give you to get back to the? If you get a call to go in, so when they call me, like what um, if you're like two hours away? Yeah, so that um, that's that's the time you have from the time they call you of two hours to well, you can they they can give you more time, but that's the minimum amount of time they can legally give you. Two, two hours. hours. Oh, that's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. Oh, that's good. And I when I first started, I lived in West Jordan, mm -hmm. so I lived like down like down on Bangor Highway from the airport. Oh, okay. So, so it wasn't too right bad. There. Yeah. But then I lived in Rose Park after that and it was like a five minute drive. So but now That's I live good. in South Salt Lake. You're loving it? It's like really quiet. I'm like one street over from the ghetto from like West Valley. <laughs> and so it's like I'm you just street. miss it. I'm just missing the crazy people, all the homeless people. The building across from me is kind of crazy. Like I've heard gunshots like once or twice, and like oh, there's yeah, this yeah. crazy lady that just like I wasn't there. My roommate called me one time, and he's like, "Dude, there's a lady in the street screaming bloody murder at three in the morning." I guess she was just like on PCP or something. <laughs> I was like, cool man, that's cool. <laughs> she was having a trip. Huh? She's just having a good time, man. Mm -hmm. She's just vibing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's uh, that's, I've been doing that for war almost three years now. Flight attendant. And now you get to do your own schedule. Yeah. Hell yeah. I've paid my dues. Okay. And where where have you traveled to? Like work or for work here. Yeah. Um, just... All over the country, but I go to a lot of small towns, a lot mm. of shitty small towns like um, Minot, North Dakota is one of the shittiest places I've ever been. Bismarck, no North Dakota in general, you can just avoid. You can just skip. Yeah, you can just forget about that, those places. Um, Wisconsin's fucking awesome, like Milwaukee and, um, shit, I forget the other one, but there's a, there's some good, like, there's some shit towns in, in America and there's also some fucking awesome towns. Milwaukee's one of them, Kansas City's one of them, um, uh, Missoula, Montana's good, mm -hmm. um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming's good, um, and how long do you stay there? So you get on these flights, you go over. Yeah, it depends. You just so like we an hour layover. Yeah, so they give us like a minimum time of rest, which is ten hours. Like they they can't call us and they can't give us if it if it, it like pushes into that ten hours, they have to extend our time, which delays flights sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so the minimum ten hours, but we can be up we can be there for up to thirty hours. So like um, this trip, I'm going to Calgary, Canada. Mm -hmm. And I get 30 hours, like a full day in Calgary. Oh, sure. Just yeah. hang out, yeah. do whatever. Yeah. And they pay for our hotels, so it's pretty nice. Oh, sure. Okay. Do they give you money for, like, to hang No. Out I work for, like, a... Uh, so there's there's mainline airlines, like Delta, United, American. Or, yeah, it's, like, the big ones. And then there's regional airlines, um, and that's the company I work for. So okay. we do all the smaller regional. airport, yeah. So I work on the smaller planes. Okay. Yeah. Does that scare you? Do they get more, like... Uh, I don't know if they get more trips. They might, but they're faster. Okay. So, so it's not good too trips. Bad. Yeah, the longest flights I've, I've ever worked are like four hours. Oh, so not too too crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I usually work like an hour and a half, two hour flights though. So, so it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So how, does, how does the pay work with that? Like, how do you like? So, um, you get paid like how long the flight is? Or yeah, so it's like, hourly. I get paid for when the the wheels go up when you take off to when you land. Okay. And then I get, I, then I, yeah. That's it? What about the rest of the time you're just standing around? Yeah, I don't get paid for that. It's sh shitty, huh? What? I get a thing called um, time away from base, which is technically any time I'm like away from Salt Lake. And that starts from like the beginning of my trip to the end. Mm. And they, I get paid like $2 an hour for that. Mm. So that's like 80, like if I'm working a four day trip, that's like 86 hours of um, time. Um, it's called per diem. Mm hmm. And eighty six dollars for two dollars an hour. 
So when you go to Calgary, that'll be... Yeah, that's I'm technically getting paid for that, yeah. Two dollars. But they also, on those days, I think they give me like four hours of pay. Mm, on top of that? Yeah. Okay. How much do you, so starting off, you, it so it depends, wage? like, well, so it sucks, because at Delta, you, you start at like 28, like $30 an hour. Oh, sure. Okay. And then at the smaller ones, you start at like 18, 19. Mm-hmm. And then at, after my first year, I got a $4 raise, and then I've got a, a dollar raise every single year. Oh, okay. So I'm at like 23, 24 right now. Oh, okay. well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's not bad. Like, pay all my bills perfectly fine. How many flights can you do in a day? Because that's not a lot. Like if you I think you can do as many flights d- during the day, but you can only do you can only work a certain amount of hours. So from the time you, um, it's called sh- your show time, and that's the time you're supposed to be at the airport ready to like get the plane ready. Mm-hmm. And from that time, um, you can work be up to your duty day can be up to fourteen hours, and it can be extended a little bit because of delays or maintenance mm-hmm. issues mm-hmm. so 14 hours is like the cutoff so if i like exceed that like they i have to like they have to call in another flight attendant it happens to pilots a lot more than me though like mm-hmm. they they'll they'll get timed out and so they legally can't fly anymore damn yeah which sucks because sometimes it's happened and then you're just like we, we're stuck here damn there was damn. one dude there's a fucking crazy stories like there's this one guy or a, one crew during the fires this year where they were stuck in somewhere in Denver, like they were told to get like land because of the smoke was so bad, mm-hmm. and they couldn't find a hotel for them anywhere within like any like three hours drive, and so they had to sleep on the plane. <laughs> Damn, they just chilled there, huh? Yeah, I mean they weren't stoked about it, but right. Yeah, isn't that so fucked up? Yes. I would have quit. I would really? Quit. Did you know? Dude, yeah, you need your hotels. You need you need like a bed. Day. Dealing, yeah, you're dealing with drunks all day, dealing with fucking bitches all day, and Karen's like. Oh, I, and then everybody's still on the plane, so everybody. So, they, just, so they, I, th- I think they had to get a bus for them. Oh, for the. And the crew was supposed to stay. Oh, they had to fly to the airplane back later. Uh, as long as there's no people around, I guess. That's yeah, right. I guess, I guess, but still. Party on a plane. The, they're not super comfortable planes because they're so small. Mm-hmm. What are you talking? Like how small? How many people? Fit? So we. My airline has um, four aircraft, and it's like a fifty-seater, a sixty-nine-seater, oh, okay. so and then tiny, and then like this biggest one we have is like seventy-six. Oh shit! Yeah, damn. But it sucks because on the fifty-seater, there's only one flight attendant, so it's just it's just me. Oh, it's just you doing yeah. with everybody. And there's when I first started, I had one of my, my friends from St. George came up for their birthday, and we didn't find we couldn't find a place to go to like drink because I think they were underage at the time. And we just drank at their hotel, and I, I passed out. I passed out in their hotel, and they're, they're such saints because they woke me up and they're like, "Hey, you gotta go. You gotta go to work." And I went to work hungover, and I worked my first flight on the fifty seater by myself, and I threw up all day. <laughs> it was so bad, dude. I would like go like give snacks and drinks and stuff, and then go back to my little space and just hurt like just just go as far into the corner as possible so no one could see me and it's just. Just, just throw up everywhere, yeah, all day. Mm-hmm. And then, then if, of That's course, it's up. super bumpy, so I'm just like... Mm. Yeah, no, I don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, that was just nice like a good time. No. No. So, but, what's, so what's the benefits? You, you were telling me that you get to travel for cheap. Yeah, it's crazy, like, you I... Paris? Yeah, so uh, um, domestically, like anywhere in the United States, I can go for free. It's just the way it works is just if, if there's an NPC, I can I get it. Mm-hmm. So full flights, I, I don't get on those. But for international, I just pay the taxes coming back to the States. Mm-hmm. So um, the first time I ever left the United States, I was signing up for a WASA membership. And the, the lady's like, so what do you do? Like, you're, you're a flight attendant, you can travel? I'm like, yeah. She's like, could you... So you could just go to Paris for fun. I'm like, yeah, I could go to Paris today, actually, if I just wanted to. And she's like, no way. I'm like, when's the next flight? And she looked it up, and she's like, it's like at, like, 5.30. And, and it was ter- 2.30 at the time. I'm like, okay, like, cool, whatever. And then we're getting closer to being down. Like, And I was just looking at the flights. Just to, I was curious because I want to see if there's any open seats. And there was, like, 40 open seats. 
And I was like, well, how much longer is this going to take? And she's like, oh, yeah, we're almost done. I'm like, okay, well, if we could just, like, wrap this up, I'm going to go to Paris. And she's like, what? She's like, you're fucking with me? Hey, you're, yeah, exactly, you're fucking with me? Nope, I'm not. And she's like, okay, well, good luck. And so I ran home, got, grabbed a backpack, and I ran to the airport. And then all of a sudden, I'm on the plane, and it just hits me. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm like, leave. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea what I'm gonna do when I get there, and so I call my I'm mom like, "Hey, mom, like, just want to let you know, like, you might not hear from me for the next day because I'm going off service because I'm going out of the country." She's like, "And my parents, they get me, they get my benefits. I don't know why that works that way, but they just do." Mm-hmm. And then she's like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm like going to Paris right now." She's like, and she's just more upset by the fact that I didn't call her to tell her to come with me. I'm like, "Mom, I literally decided to go to Paris 45 <laughs> minutes ago. Like, I don't. I'm sorry." Cause she lives in St. George and uh, yeah, then I just like fell asleep, woke up and then the flight attendant found out I was a flight attendant and she's like, don't worry, I'll take care of you. And she got me fucked up on the way oh, to Paris. Yeah, yeah. I got so drunk and then I was hung over during the flight and then I was like kind of sobered up by the time we landed. So I'm like hung over, like disoriented in, in Paris, just fucking exhausted. What do you do in Paris? Um, I walked to the Louvre, or no, sorry, I got, I like, the first place I went to was the Notre, D- Notre Dame, and it, w- it was like right after it burned down, so it was like all in scaffolding and oh, stuff, I did hear about that. and then I went to the Eiffel Tower, walked up the entire way, um, got lunch, went to the Louvre, and then I went back to the airport and flew back the next morning. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it was a long day. Um, the first thing a Parisian ever told me he was like, I was, I somehow like met a couple from California and they bought my train ticket. They're like super nice. And this old ass man. Yeah. It was crazy. I just talked to them in line and then they were like, Hey, yeah, just follow West for a little bit. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then you get killed and murdered. Yeah, exactly. I'm just a slave in Paris. Um, no, I, there was just this old guy sitting in front of us and he turns around and he goes, American. And we're like, yeah. And he goes, go fuck yourself. And then turns around and doesn't say anything Jesus. for the rest of the around. I'm like, cool. This is, I'm, I'm here. I finally made it. But yeah, so um, on the flight back, I paid like like $60 total for like the round trip. To Paris. Yeah. To France. Yeah. I paid more f- for food there than I did with my plane ticket. Damn. Yeah. Have you taken any more crazy trips like that where you just go somewhere? Um, the next month I went to Amsterdam, but I gave myself like a couple of days. Okay. Because it's, so, it's so exhausting, dude. Because like I came back from Paris. No, sorry. Yeah, I so I did that in twenty. I was in Paris for twenty three hours. I did just as much flying as I did being in Paris. Mm. I was like, that's fucked up. That's not. Because I was my dad worked at the airline I used to work for, and I heard people doing that before, and I didn't think it was real, and so I wanted to try it. And so I was like, okay, I did it. Never have to do it again. So whenever I leave the country, I'm like, I have to be, I have to give myself like four, three or four days. Just a heads up. Just to give myself like. Mentally prepared. Well, just like, yeah, getting past the jet lag and then it, like enjoying the place. Cause I was in Amsterdam for like three or four days and oh, that shit was amazing. Oh yeah. I would move there right now if I could. Really? Yeah, everyone's so nice. Everyone speaks English. Everyone's like, love, like they like Americans opposed to Paris. The food yeah, what's their deal with us? Dude, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know about like world history or not, but if, if it wasn't for America, they'd be speaking German right now. Right? Yeah. And I, so I don't I don't understand why they're fucking bitches about everything. Mm-hmm. They don't, they smell worse than us. <laughs> We're taller. They speak French, like, come on. They <laughs> speak French. <laughs> French is hard, man. Yeah, French sounds... In high school, I tried taking two years of French, mm-hmm. and my French teacher was a Brazilian native, so her fir- her native language is Portuguese. She then oh. went to Paris for school, for like for college, like a foreign exchange student. Mm-hmm. So her second language is French, and then she moved to America after. So her third language is English, and she's trying to teach French oh, no. with a Portuguese a- accent. In English. Yeah. Dude, I didn't learn. A <laughs> Fucking She's just making up shit. I I was she just like get like give us like the lesson and I was just like uh uh Jade Jeremy I guess 
And she's like, good, good. I don't, I don't even know the word good. That's how bad she was at teaching. Damn. Super nice lady, but fucking, maybe you, want, maybe you might want to do something else, like teach jujitsu or something. I mean, she's trying to learn English at the same time. And then... Well, she knew English. She was, she was good enough to be a high school teacher. Isn't that crazy? She's a yeah. fucking high school teacher. I'm like, you can barely speak three words, but we'll give you a job. <laughs> That's how desperate my high school is, I guess. Jesus. Yeah. Get together. How hard was it to get a job as a flight attendant? It was so apparently it's like hard. Is it? Yeah. Like, um, for Delta, it's like you're more likely to get hired at um, Delta. Or sorry, you're, you're more likely to go to accepted. Jesus, I can't even speak English. You're more likely to be accepted into Harvard than you are to become a Delta flight attendant. Like it's that what limited. The hell? Yeah. And I guess Skywest, um, that's the airline we're for Skywest. The per- it's apparently the best one, the re- best regional airline, and it's not easy to get into. And so I drove from St. George to Salt Lake for the interview, did really well in the interview, and they gave me the job like instantly. And then when I went to, when I went into um, my training, everybody in my training was like, yeah, that was like my third time applying. Um, there was a bunch of people that were like 45 years old that were like, this is my dream job. Like I've been waiting to do this my entire life. What? And no. I was, dude, I know, it was so no. sad. I was like, I'm, at the time, I was 22, and I was like, I'm just like, <laughs> trying to get the fuck out of St. George, dude. I'm trying, not to, I'm trying not to be in St. George, and I'm trying not to work at a warehouse. Oh, no. And everyone's like, I was a teacher, I used to be a Disney princess, like, all this crazy shit. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know. I have no idea why I'm here. They just liked you, huh? I guess. Damn. Oh, yeah. yeah. You charmed me, dude. I was a lot charming back then, yeah. Life is kind of fucking maybe hardened, I guess. <laughs> Just a little bit. It's an airline attending. Yeah, huh? man. I think we're they're applying. Yeah, but you can't do drugs, no. No. But you, do you get tested regularly? No, that's the annoying part. Is I've been randomly drug tested. And the way they do it is you just like, it's at the end of your trip, you're like grabbing your stuff ready to go. And then this random dude's like, hey, follow me, you have to, I have to collect your piss. And then you're like, oh, I refuse to uh, take like piss, like it can, you could uh, forfeit your job. So you, I just followed this guy to a bathroom, went pee, and then I gave it to him. So it's just like, it's, it's that kind of random, but it's been two years since I've been random. Oh, two years? Oh, it's weird. Oh, it's been like... No, which means, yeah, which means I'm like, I'm either due or I won't have another drug test for, for, for. two years. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'd rather have free free flights and... Yeah, yeah than risk it. Yeah. I don't like weed that much anyway, so... Yeah, me neither. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, that's not what it's about. But, so, can you bring people with you when you... Go or is it just your parents that get the benefit? Um, so my parents. Are you so hook I've. It up? Um, what's that? Are you gonna hook it up? <laughs> so I've I I've, I've been saving it for a, like a girlfriend, and I haven't had one until like recently. Okay. So I oh, can't yeah. hook it up because I've because well, my siblings always took the spots, mm-hmm. and then I would always have like one more spot, and mm-hmm. I would I I tried selling it actually, recently like months ago someone was offered to buy my spot for like a grand Damn. and they didn't take it so uh i could hook it up mm-hmm. potentially but some my, my future wife might be taking it Ooh. up so you're gonna bring her here from mexico maybe she is uh, in mexico yeah what the heck how did you meet her she was here oh she was here yeah okay. she w- she somehow got a job in virginia for, during the summer and then right before she left, there was, she met some family from Utah. And I was like, hey, like, come out and live with us for like a, your last month of your visa and just enjoy Utah with us. And she's like, yeah, I'm down. So I met her while she was here before she left. And then uh, we had a good time. She was like, you have to come You have to come down here. I'm like, okay. And that's what, so I was there this last weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah. For her, or were you just there yeah. for a job? No, nope. her. Yeah. Was it amazing? It was dope too. Like, where'd I could, you go? Where'd you go to? Uh, Merida. Where's, where's Mer- that? Mer- Meridia. Merida. It's uh, it's in the south. It's like, oh, it's okay. in the Yucatan. Okay. It's 
It's like it's two hours um, west of Cancun, I think. Like a two hour drive to Cancun. So it's nice beachy. Yeah, it's like right next to the ocean. The weather's really good. Um, good food. Like I think it's a lot cheaper than Cancun too. So it was, it was nice. Like I, I, I was thriving with just three thousand pesos. Hell yeah, yeah. Three So, so yeah, it's a. Uh, I would have offered to one of the guys, but. Sorry. She locked it down with her, huh? It's yeah. I. It seems like that. It seems like it seems that way. I've also made mistakes with women before. Fucking, I ever showed you that? To flamingo. No, like no, me. I've seen it though. It looks like me, dude. So, that was yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say it. I don't want to say that it looked a little bit. Um, no, I. That's a matching tattoo with a uh, girl. Oh no. Yeah, dude. Oh no, I was right. Cause you guys thought you were gonna be forever. Dude, I yeah. thought I thought I was gonna marry that bitch. What happened? We've all been there. She Except went back to her ex boyfriend. Ooh. Isn't that cool? No. It's so when I shower, it's I'm cold. just like. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Thank you for that. Why the flamingos? Oh, dude, it's embarrassing. Fucking. Let's hear it. Have you ever heard the song Flamingo? Uh uh-uh. Um. Let's it a little bit. Oh, hold on. Yeah. I'll play it for you. It's, the, it's like amusingly bad. But it's kind of catchy, and, and it, I, I don't know why I like it as much as I do. But I remember showing it to her the first time we met, like we were talking. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what the fuck? I love the song. And she sang it word for word. And I was like, who is this bitch? Like, no one, I, I, every single time I show people a song, no one knows what it is. And the fact she knew it word for word, I was like, holy fuck. And then uh, we just always joked about getting a tattoo of a flamingo. And then what... Uh, the day after we had sex for the first time, we we're just like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's go get it." Oh no! Yeah, that sounds it, like some Mormon. Yeah, uh, you know that. You have sex one time and you think <laughs> you're in love. Dude, what the hell? She knew this whole. The <laughs> she knew it worked for like it's part like Japanese. Okay, I'll, I'll play later. I don't want to give you coffee. <laughs> um, that was funny, <laughs> dude. It's it's bad. And so I, I had to tell my parents that I had to, like they're like, so why the flamingo? I'm like, fuck, like this something. Yeah, I want to tell you. But yeah, it was a uh, it's kind of like a love at first sight thing, and then turns out that doesn't exist. Bro, yeah. how long did you know the girl then? Same thing, ain't pimping, dog. Same thing, ain't pimping. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I, had to find out, I had to find out the hard way. I had to find out. I had to find out the permanent tattoo. No, dude, that's crazy. I, I knew. I only knew. We knew each other for like six months, and then we started hanging out like consistently for like three. So this is like okay, so nine months is what this does did to me. How old are you? I was uh, too young at the time. Twenty two, twenty three at the time. Okay, yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah, dude. It felt hard. I felt hard. It felt hard before COVID. It's when like emotion, like people were like intact as human beings, emotionally. Now I'm like, I would never fucking yeah. Sex on the first date, you're wild. Oh really? Where, no, I don't know. Maybe who knows? I mean, <laughs> no, yeah, that's crazy. Man. <laughs> I wait until marriage. That's why I'm still virgin. So you still go to church. This one's still a virgin. Virgin. Oh, that's good. I've never been married. You gotta save it. You gotta save yourself for, right. for, for God. For the right woman. Yep. Yeah, and uh, one day. You're saving yourself for the right woman? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Do you do you have Tinder? No. No. Mm-hmm. Just the uh, just the game. Just one. Facebook. Oh. Facebook and uh you have the Facebook one? AOL. No. Nah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, isn't there a Facebook dating app? Yeah, yeah it's Facebook Tinder pretty much. God. It's Facebook Tinder pretty much, yeah. That's the place to be, I heard. Really? Never. That sounds awful. No? I hate Facebook. Dude, imagine living in St. George during both the last two elections. It was wild. Oh, yeah. It was wild down there. And so Facebook was just the worst place I've ever been on. Mm-hmm. And so I deleted it because of that. So to go oh, back... Too. Yeah, so to go back to Facebook and try and find love there sounds like <laughs> the most yeehaw racist bullshit I've ever heard in my entire life. 
Wait, so where did you meet this girl though? This girl from Mexico. Where did you meet her? Um, she was like I said, I met her here. So yeah. like, um, at a bar or something? No, on Tinder. Oh, on Tinder. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, it was just super lucky. Like I met her the week before she left. We hung out a few times. I was like, this bitch is cool. Like nothing happened while she was we were here. And then you guys just kept in touch. Mm hmm. She was like, um, I talked about coming down for vacation uh, last month, and I couldn't make it. And then we were talking about going, me going next month for a birthday, and I, I didn't get that time off either. And then I just okay. happened to get this last weekend off. So, super spontaneous, super like they just got an Airbnb last second downtown. Yeah, yeah. It's tight. It's cool. How much was your trip over there? Total. Like, like fifty bucks. Cool. Uh, it was a little more expensive for some reason. I think that because of Biden, the taxes were a little higher. So it's like 80, but oh, still. Okay. 80 for, cheap, for round trip, that's like... To Mexico? Yeah. I think it's like 400 one way. So I'll take it. So you're saving money. I save money, but I don't make a lot of money. That's the problem. So the, the girl you slept with, so you knew her for eight months. Yeah. Before you slept with her? Yeah. I met her family and everything. Before you even slept with her? Yeah. How come you guys waited so long? You guys were just that. We're like, well, so we were both like leaving Mormonism, like kind of at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we were just like skeptical about it, but also like want to make sure like this, we like, we were trying to make sure like this, we wanted this. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. And then, and then it seemed that we did. And then a month later she went back to her fucking abusive boyfriend. And I was like, thanks. How, how'd she, how'd she end things with it? Pretty cold, or was it like... It was cold as fuck, dude. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. She, she like, lied to her parents about going to Atlanta. Like, her parents had, a tra like, a tracker on her phone. Because she... I, heard, I think her family's from California. What? Yeah. She's from, she's from like, Victorville or something. It's a ghetto-ass town in California. And somehow ended up in St. George. And she, uh... And she, like, removed the, tr the tracker from her phone... And then went on a trip to Atlanta with her friends, and like that's when like things got weird. She just like stopped texting me and just thought, like stopped communicating. And I was like, "What is happening?" And then all of a sudden she's like, "I didn't want to make you like mad or sad." But I went back to my ex. I'm like, "Oh hell no!" Out of nowhere, just yeah. like that, dude. Holy yeah, dude. shit! Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. Do you put in all that time? Yeah, I like any day I had off, I'd go drive us to um, St. George just hang out there. Oh no! Yeah, for like two you months. Sucker. I know. I got fucking. You got got. Real <laughs> in, dude. <laughs> and the tattoos. Who's ta whose idea was that? It was a mutual thing. I I, I think because she had a tattoo already, and I didn't have one yet. Cause I, but I I want tons, and then I was like, damn. A, f a tattoo of a flamingo would be kind of funny. She was like, yeah, that'd be f hilarious. I'm like, should we get a matching one? She was like, yeah. <laughs> it was just a super spontaneous, sober decision. So fucked up, dude. I would never again. But then I'm an idiot because the next tattoo was another matching tattoo with my best friend. I mean, that's fine. But that one's okay. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm okay with that one because it was, it was for Kobe Bryant after he died. And, uh... What is it? A plane crash? Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's a fi it's a fiery uh, fire and bodies oh. on my chest. No, it's is a, it? It's his logo. Uh, it's like his first logo. Uh, okay. Yeah, but yeah. so yeah, so now I only I only have matching tattoos, so I feel like I should only get matching tattoos for the rest of my life. Keep it going. Should let's I? get one. Should we? Yeah. All right, let's figure it out. What do we want? What are we gonna get? We're, we'll do a little microphone for our first podcast. Damn, that's pretty good. A little mic. And for comedy. Have you, do you know the, like the comedy masks? The masks. We should do that. I get one and you get one. I get the sad one and you get the... <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with that. Over the flamingo. Oh, as a cover? Dude, I, I, I don't know if I want to get another one there. That, it hurts there. Yeah. Are you going to get that one covered or are you just going to keep it? Uh, I thought about covering it, but I'm just like... It's kind of a cool memory. It's not like you married her or anything. No, no, no. no. I, haven't like, I haven't talked to her in Ever. Like it's we're like mute, like it's cordial and it, there's no beef anymore like but did, that shit did fuck me up for a while yeah but I, I'm not gonna go to the Athena's and talk about 
blending <laughs> her and shit. <laughs> Were you there? Did you hear about that? Uh, well, I was outside, but I heard that, yeah, that... My God. What's his name? I forgot his name, but uh, he... Giorgio or whatever. Giorgio did a joke. Were you there last night? I well, think you guys I was, left. I was there last night, yeah. But you guys left. There's this kid, Giorgio. He probably went up as soon as we were leaving. You missed yeah. it, dude. You missed it. This kid went up, and he's, like, kind of on the spectrum. Huh. Um, he's either on the spectrum or on drugs or both. <laughs> because he's, like, really like really shaky. He wasn't really talking to the mic, so I had no idea what he was saying. And then, for some reason, at the end of the, his set... He got like really focused in, and he started talking about um, like um, cutting up his like ex girlfriend and talking about blending her and get, like making make sure that the blood blood splatters all over the wall. And then the the, the the host was like, "Hey man, we talked about this. Like we're not don't talk about that." And he's like, "Okay, okay, okay." And then it continues going off about like, "I want to make I want to create rocket ships." So I can put everyone on Earth and take them to different planets in the galaxy and leave her here alone so she can die alone. And I was just like, what the... And he, the guy's like, hey, move on from her, man. Like, we don't, don't talk about her. And finally, he, like, like he like cuts him off. He's like, all right, give her a plus for Georgie or whatever. And he seems, like, pretty stuffed, like he, like he did, like did a good job. And then all of a sudden, some fucking um, wide-ass Karen comes over and starts, like, bitching. I didn't hear her bitch at him out for a second. But she was just started being like, fuck you, like, get the fuck out of here, like, that kind of stuff. And the host was like, hey, like, not here, we're not doing this, like, there's a girl doing poetry right now. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, Giorgio and his friend leaves. And then the host goes down and starts talking to, uh, I, I thought he was just talking to that girl, but I, I want, went downstairs to get his number, the guy's number so I could text him next week. And he's talking to the owner, he's talking to that lady, and then he apparently, the ex-girlfriend was there. No. She was there, dude. No. Yes. His ex girl. His ex girlfriend was there, and she was like crying. She was like, "I don't feel safe coming to a place where someone wants me to die." And I was like, I was, I kind of like was trying not to laugh because it's like, I get it. Like that's that's kind of terrifying. But who likes their ex, right? Right. Yeah. True. But <laughs> but like, I get it. I get it. I get both sides. But mm -hmm. the fact that she like was like. Being super hostile towards the guy, it's like I, he was trying. To, he was just expressing himself and trying to get his emotions right. out there. But at the same time, like I understand that she, how because she's like the owner's like, so we don't want him back for like the next three months. We're gonna like ban him for a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. I didn't hear how soon bit of it. I want. I was trying to be respectful and not like eavesdrop. At the same time, like I want yeah, to hear yeah. everything you're saying. Um, and so the the girls like. I don't even feel comfortable being here anymore, so I don't, I don't know if I'll come back. Like that kind of stuff. So I was like, dude, this is... And that was the first time I ever went to Athena's. I mean, I was if like, she's going to be bitching, I mean, she might as well not, no. I heard he got attacked, though. Did you see that? Georgia did? Yeah, that the lady started pulling his ear, like his <gasps> hair or some shit. I didn't see that. No? Who was the lady? Was it the owner or something? I think she works there. Hmm. I think the lady that yelled at him was. is like a barista or something. But yeah. These might be getting crazy sometimes. Dude, I felt, I was like, is it like this every single week? And apparently it's not. You got lucky, dude. I mean, it depends on the mic. Because RJ got attacked at a mic before. Did he? What? At Ice House. Doing what? Why? Uh, I don't know what happened. I think he said some jokes and he was coming off stage. And he got approached by some drunk guy. And the drunk guy just started going at him. And that girl helped RJ out. The uh, white blonde one that's always at Ice House? Not Holly. The no, not Holly. Holly. Oh, the white blonde one. Um, what's her name? Fuck, dude, I can't remember. But she does karate or something and... Uh, Just whooped his ass? Yeah, I guess she got him in like a chokehold. And then as she's getting him in a chokehold, RJ just leaves. Just did. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, but she has this handle that he goes outside. RJ is, dude, I love RJ. Dude, RJ is the best. He's so he's a, fucking... He, such I, a nice guy. I know, he, he has some dark-ass jokes, which is why he, it's so funny to me, because he's, like, the sweetest guy. Yeah, he's been through some shit, though. Yeah, I know, for sure. Um, damn, that's hilarious. I'm surprised that hasn't happened to me yet. Oh, it'll probably happen, for sure. How's that not happened to you? 
Cause it's gay. So dude, like, you, get, like, you, get, you said like some fucking offensive, raunchy ass shit, dude. All the oh, time. Oh, compared to the other guys, no. Man. Huh? I feel like he's pretty tame compared to the other guys. Yeah. Like family. I mean, you know, dark jokes, but like Nick goes up there and talks about fucking selling dog meat and like <laughs> oh, child yeah. slavery. Oh yeah. <laughs> and talks about how good um, child uh, kids. That are traffic cabin. Have yeah. You seen, have you heard that one? Of course. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there's people, and then RJ has, says like some cr- fucking crazy kid jokes. I haven't, I haven't heard so much of RJ stuff. Only no. heard, like once or twice. He's not bad. And then there's, I think Angel's way darker than you. I think um, there's some dark guys. So I wouldn't say he's. I, I'm so. I wouldn't. Be, I would be actually surprised if someone tried to fight him. I think they're just such good jokes that like you can't, you can't. You like, could cl- claim it as a hate crime if they did. Nah. That one time when we went to the, uh, Utah State. Oh, yeah, I did get called out, though. Yeah. What? Yeah, when I was I was bombing at Utah State, and these people in the front row, this guy, he's like, you're not funny, get off stage. And I don't remember what I said. I was kind of out of it, but I was like. No, nah, he's like, so, like, some dude starts saying something to Brandon, just like. He's like, hey, he's like, hey, man, can you just stop already? Like, oh, yeah, he's yeah, like, can yeah, you just stop? Right. He's like, you're not funny. Like, these jokes aren't funny. And then Jaren's like, why? He's like, why? Because you can't take it or something like that? Because like, you can't handle it? And then, like, the guy's like, no, it's just not funny, this and that. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Brandon was like, did not give a shit what that guy said at all. But then, like. You can't care for those guys. Yeah, but then. He, the dude, the host guy, he made Brandon get off, though, after oh, that. Oh, yeah, I continued, and then I was kind of out of it, and he literally, like, grabbed the mic from my hand. Yeah. Snatched fuck, it away. Fuck that guy. He's like, yeah, you're done. He's like, oh I told you this was PG-13 or something like that. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, there was, like, oh. kids there and stuff. Yeah, there was, yeah, this whole family walked out. I think it was, like, my, yeah, maybe it was my, it was one of my first shows, and I kept asking people, I'm like, I'm like, should I clean it up or should I just keep it? And people are like, well, he saw your stuff, right? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm, they're like, just do that. And I'm like, I'm like, I just went with my gut and I did what I just was used to. No, that's the, that, that's the right decision. I, I felt like that guy was trying to freaking fight Brandon for a second. I was like, oh, God. I was like. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Yeah, I, was, guess, I guess it became a story downtown and it, it made me kind of a legend. That I don't know. Because some other people from... Uh, that do stand up a lot where they're mm-hmm. my best. They they talk about it. They talk about that's it. That's cool. And I don't know about See, it. that's all that matters. They're like, oh shit, we want the kid that just doesn't give a fuck. That doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, you gotta, you, you just gotta do it. So I think that was the right decision because what if you just did clean material? And no one ever talks about you. That's true. Yeah, because it could have just been a good night. And I mean, people talk about people that. Yeah, no, sure. Like, and, and you could have yeah. been. It could have been like evil people talking about you, but the fact, but no. the fact that you leaned into like you. When you weren't supposed to, and you bomb, and then it's just like a, a whole, it's a whole thing. It's it like that's way story. better, I think, in my opinion. Because in high school, I was the class clown, and I would do stand up for the town show every single year. Oh, and, yeah, that's sick, yeah. and the last year, I decided to do a roast, but no one knew it was a roast. It was just me talking shit. I'm just like pimped up aggression for the last four years of just like either people I liked really well that I, I, was, I was okay making fun of, or I just didn't give a fuck because it's the last day of school. I was like, what are they going to do? Not let me graduate. Mm-hmm. And I, I started with a joke that was like, I did three jokes. I did three jokes and I was cut off. I got kicked off the stage. Uh, they were supposed, they were supposed to give me 20 minutes and they gave me, you're going to do 20 minutes. Yeah. I 20 minutes of, of just shitting on everybody. And, uh, it was something like, oh, that would have been fun. yeah, dude, I, I was, I made fun of the football team cause they've lost every single state championship playoff game so mm-hmm. i made fun of like the team for that and everyone was like oh fuck dude like too soon like, it's like that's that's too that's too close to home i made um i made oh i made one of the best jokes i've ever written um the girls basketball team in my high school up until my senior year never won a single game they were like <laughs> oh in like 30 for the like my freshman through junior year and then my senior year we finally made it to the playoffs um, and I was just like, uh, this is the first winning season we've had in over 20 years and we made it to the playoffs. Um, but unfortunately it's girls basketball, so no one gives a fuck <laughs> or no one, no one, don't, nobody cares. And that got a pretty good response. But then I, I made fun of the, um, the cross country team and I called them starving, starving Ethiopians in front of my entire school. 
and I got kicked off, and for whatever reason, people have never forgotten that. They were just like, dude, that was so awesome. They made fun of Ethiopians. And like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> it was so funny. You made fun of Ethiopians, well, dude. <laughs> I, I made fun of this particular family because they've adopted a bunch of um, kids from Africa. Mm. Oh, they did. And I was like, well, I, I was like, um, give it up to the cross country team. Um, although I, um, oh, I can't remember how the wording of it, but I just, I call them starving Ethiopians. And I was like, you know, kind of like something that like th- that family adopts. Mm-hmm. So I made fun of the family and so everyone just lost their fucking mind. Like I, that I killed just in that one joke. And then they were like, all right, you're done. Give me the, give me the mic. You're done. And oh, they yeah. like became a legend after that. So I was like, so you, you never know. And just in the weirdest dumb times, you've just become... What, what, infamous. Right, right, right. What's going to become those things? It was weird, stories? dude. So you, have you ever been... Do you have any more Mormon friends? Uh, or not really? Oh, like like super like, Mormon? Whatever. Like, just like... Yeah, ex-Mormons. Oh. Okay. Um, so there's a thing called um, farewells, where people will like, go to the church to watch you speak before you leave on your mission. And uh, there's this thing called homecomings, where it's the same thing, but when you come back from the missions. Oh, yeah, because you always see the cups on the... Yeah, it's, dude, just it's home so home. fucking dumb, dude. Um, Welcome back, Elder Schmidt. Oh, fuck. I went to this homecoming of this kid I went to high school with. And afterwards, I left. I was walk- walking to my car, and an SUV pulls up to me. And it's a mom. And she rolls out the window, and she's like, Are you Jeremy Willard? And I'm like, Yeah. And she's like, Did you do that comedy roast back in high school, uh, back in Pineview, like two years ago? Or like a year ago? And I was like, Yeah. And she's like, My kids told me all about it. Very funny. I was like, what the Hell fuck, yeah. dude? So, like, it, like, it was weird. Right? Like, the whole, and I went to, I went home after school that day, after the, I did the roast. Mm. And my sister, who went to a different school, was like, heard about the roast. Very funny. I was like, what? what? It, it, was, it was wild. It made no sense. So, Damn, I don't see? like talking about it because it's high school, but like, I was like, no, it blew me away. I was like, I don't know how many people knew about this. So, first summer, like, I, if I ever, ever went to like a house party, they were like, right, right, right. And the guy, I'm like, don't beat me up. Don't beat me up, please. I'm just a guy. So. Yeah, it became infamous. It just it takes one. I mean, the rose, sir. So we yeah. should have had you on the rose. Should have, but it's okay. No one. I'll pay, I have to pay. My, I feel like I have to pay my dues a little bit. Yeah, you just started. It. But, no, yeah, apparently you've been doing stand-up for a minute since high school. Yeah, off and on. Yeah. There was no place to do stand-up in St. George. There was like one um, like coffee shop smoothie place. I was like the place, and then it closed down. Damn, so so there's no place to do open mics, no nothing. So I was I kind of like wanted to go down to Vegas and do open mics, but I was just like working all the time, so I just had no no ambition for it, which kind of mm-hmm. sucked. All my friends were gone, and I was just working full time, so I didn't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. So when I figured out why I moved up here, I was like, oh. Let's do it. And I was doing it kind of, and then COVID happened. Uh, and then, yeah. Then you're back into it. Trying to. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I think that was good, right? Yeah. Uh, Thanks for coming in, Jordan. Yeah, man. It was a pleasure. You had some good stories. Yeah. yeah. It was good. I'll, uh, <laughs> if, I ever, if you ever invite me back, I will have to tell you about the summer where I worked at a, at a, a like a boys camp, like a summer therapy camp. Oh, yeah. Shit's wild, dude. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll have you back. We'll have you back. Summer therapy camp. We'll keep you posted.